previously on Insert Credit. Vince has been on the show at least once before. I'm pretty really? sure. Really? Right. Okay. Right no, I don't think I have. What? <laughs> I'm escaping to the one place that hasn't been corrupted by capitalism. Insert Credit! This is episode 202 of the Insert Credit Show, the relentlessly paced smorgasbord of video game topics where our panel of experts must address every question in six minutes' time or face the penalty in the wrath of a horrible buzzer. I'm Alex Jaffe, broadcasting for the Jewish holiday season from Hollywood, Florida, and if my hometown were a sonic level... It would be called Hard Rock Zone. Uh, I'm Frank Cifaldi, and uh, if my hometown was a sonic level, it'd be called Casino Night Zone. <laughs> I am from Las Vegas, folks. You got it. I'm Brandon Sheffield. I was trying to find another Tim Curry quote to make a joke with, and I, I couldn't do it fast enough. Um, oh, I guess you got caught up in the anticipation. Oh, uh, yeah, there we go. Okay. Um, that's a pretty good one. I was trying to look for that movie. Uh, I thought that was the easiest to grasp. Should have gone with like Mousetrap. Is he in that Mousetrap? He's in everything. Yeah, he's in everything. I guess it would be Scrapyard Zone. <laughs> I mean, technically I was born in Berkeley, California, not Oakland, California. And Berkeley is just like, I don't know. Is there like a boring white people zone? I guess that'd be. <laughs> if you want to call it that, you can. It's, it's probably in Sonic 06. Boring white people zone, that's, that's the zone. Sure, luffy luffy zone. Yeah, I'm, yeah. I'm looking for house rentals around there right now, and uh, I, I think it's a bad living room layout zone. Sure, but also a 65-year-old woman wearing a scarf and wandering aimlessly. Yeah, yeah, and and all, all of them have long gray hair. They don't yeah. cut it short. But Bush goes well, Some of them cut it short. It depends on how high up into the hills you go. Higher oh, in the hills, true. they do cut the hair. Yeah, it, it, it's an economic thing. Yeah, Gray yeah. hills, though. We've got a guest on the show this week. Our guest is the beloved co-founder of Insert Credit and composer of some of your favorite pieces of video game music in the 21st century. Vincent Diamante is here. Yay, it's Vince. Yay, hi, I'm Vince. If my hometown was a Sonic level... Wait a minute, Brandon, you said Scrapyard Zone, didn't you? I was going to say... I did, but I abandoned it because uh, technically I was born in Berkeley, not open. Uh, okay. You can reclaim it if you want. It, it is, yeah, I'll go ahead and take it because it is definitely Scrapyard Zone. I was actually born right on that southeastern border of Washington, D.C. So, yeah, that, that that's life over there. I was an urban kid growing up. Most of my uh, growing up period, though, was in uh, Contra Costa County in El Sobrante and, and surrounding areas. And uh, I feel like, damn, what's, it, what's that oil zone called? Oil Ocean. Oil Ocean, yeah. I feel like I could also claim that because we were near a refinery and and every couple months we'd have to like stuff towels under the doors because the refinery was doing something that would kill us. <laughs> Terrific. Uh, I think we're off to a promising start, gentlemen. Oh, yes. The way this usually works is we get a question from the winner of the previous episode, who was Chris Graff. Did he fail? I, I did not get that question from him, so I have something else planned which I've uh, shuffled to later in the show. Wait, whose fault is it? Is it your fault or his fault? Let's not lay fingers here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Because if it's his fault, I want to I want to razz him. And if it's your fault, I don't really I care. sent him a message, uh, okay, but I don't know. Fault. Maybe he wasn't around. He will be razzed. Here's our question. We're recording this on September 9th, Dreamcast Day. Oh, yeah. Let's talk about our favorite Dreamcast memories and hidden gems from that console library. That's a good idea. We should do that. Well... All the games are good. The end. No. That is um, absolutely untrue. <laughs> it's totally false. But a lot more of them are interesting to me than I would have expected. And I think it's because it occupies that weird kind of high resolution space. It felt like a transitionary generation. It's simultaneously more and less advanced than the PS2. It's, I mean, it's definitely less than the GameCube. So there's a lot of weird, cool stuff on there. I like that Ill Bleed. That's a weird one. Try playing that if you dare. Horror-ish game about being in a scary amusement park and you're just managing your heart rate and try not to get stabbed. A weird thing to make. When I think about Illbleed, I think about the fact that I usually don't play horror games, but Illbleed was kind of dumb. I, yeah. I mean, it was just very it was goofy. Goofy, yes, extremely goofy. 
Um, so there was nothing really particularly scary about it. I, I was actually pretty frustrated by the whole managing how scared you were. Yes. It felt so amorphous compared to the distinct horrors that you see. Yeah, even the, the little sound effects that are supposed to scare you, they go blank. They happen like a second or a, at least a half second after whatever that scary thing was supposed to be. Like there's just no impact whatsoever. I, I have two distinct Dreamcast memories. Um, the first, and, and I think... You know, I'm not alone in this was I was walking through the mall and I was, you know, kind of window shopping and I was like, wow, why is uh, the video game store playing the broadcast of some football game? And I was like, oh, wait, that's oh, yeah. a video. Game. So that that's one. I'm sure I've shared that on the show before. I'm sure other people have that. But there you go. My other distinct memory is so I wasn't like into new video games at that point. I hadn't been for quite a while. So, you know, I knew it came out and stuff like that. I wasn't totally ignorant, but you know, it's not something that I was after at launch or anything, but when it died very quickly and systems were literally $50 at GameStop or Funko Land or whatever, and games themselves were like $5 at Best Buy, had myself a real good time getting back into video games suddenly. Yeah. I, just, I just walked out of Best Buy with a stack of games and, and I didn't even open most of them, you know, until I ended up selling them years later. Just I just never got to them. Uh, but, you know, that was my first new console since the Genesis. It only happened because it died and it was really cheap and uh, good memories there. Thanks, Dreamcast. You got Frank back into video games. Thank you. I think I, I don't know if I've told this story before. Actually, um, related to Frank's story about the, the football television broadcast, that also happened to the head of PR for the Dreamcast in the U.S. She went into a meeting. And everyone was like, what do you think? She's like, I don't know. It's, it's a football match. What am I supposed to think? And they were like, that's the game. And she was like, what? <laughs> yeah. so, I guess that happened to a few people. Um, it was a big generational leap. But yeah, I've probably mentioned this before. I got my Dreamcast at Japanese launch 1998. And it was because my stepmother's friend or coworker rather was going to Japan at that time. And I was like, get me a Dreamcast. I've saved all my money. Please get Dreamcast for me. And so they went to Japan. And I, I can't imagine doing this for a child who asked me to do something like that. <laughs> I probably would say no. But uh, they went to a store, they purchased a Dreamcast and Pen Pen Triathlon and Sonic Adventure. And so I got those and I had them in high school before anybody else. And I was playing Sonic Adventure at home. And then I got to that bit where the, the orca is chasing you down the bridge pier thing and it's all smashing the things behind yeah, you. Yeah, I never got past that part. And I was just like, video games are back. They're back. <laughs> Sega is back. Everything's back. Everything's fine. This is good. And then Sonic ran up a wall and I was like, heck yes. <laughs> Let's do it. This is the next generation. And then when the when it died, uh, Vince, I don't know if you remember feeling this way, but I, I felt like sad and betrayed <laughs> by by the world i was like obviously the dreamcast is the best it's got all the 2d fighting games it's got all the sega games on it yeah. it's clearly the thing that everyone wants it sold super well why did this happen and i just i felt like the rug had been torn out from under under me vince do you remember feeling that yeah. way it was during early insert credit days i really did have that feeling too i think it's especially because snk and capcom loved the dreamcast they right. really put so much effort on making the Dreamcast work, or at least obviously because they released games like sell it, but they put so much good stuff. I mean, it's not like I could afford a Neo Geo, but I can afford Last Blade for Dreamcast. Right. It, it was just such an intersection of all the things that I had loved up to that point. And those things were nowhere near as good on PlayStation 1. And, you know, the PS2, eh, whatever, it wasn't out on there yet. PS2 was, uh, was still barely out at the time that the Dreamcast died. PS2 didn't really have a six button controller either. Yeah. For Capcom game. Yeah, I liked my ASCII fighting type pad. Oops. Here's our next question What are the coolest ways to use specific instruments in a video game soundtrack? Arena? Well, it's You're doing time. this because I'm a music person? Yeah, you think right. I can answer questions about music? Yeah. yeah. Let's do it. Man, best way to use specific instruments. You like using that iwi. I do like using that iwi. I have an electric wind instrument. And it's really cool because it, it's electric and it detects the capacitance of my fingers on the instrument in order to do weird fingerings. Um, and I can bite on it and blow on it and bend the mouthpiece in all sorts of different ways. And it's really fun. 
to do that. It looks like you're playing a weird sort of clarinet, but really you're just messing with the goofiest 80s and 90s analog synths. So if you want something that sounds like massive bass, it's awesome. If you want something that's uh, super cute and melodic, it's really cool for that. But wait a minute, we're talking about video games, right? Um, yeah. Yeah. You've used it in there. Yeah, I mean, I, I can do that. Maybe I'm misconstruing the question, but I thought That's all we this do. was for players playing a video game that has to do with music. And I'm thinking about things like, what, Rhapsody for the PS1, Eternal Sonata for Xbox 360, which weren't really great role-playing. Or is that not the direction that you guys are thinking? It's about? whatever direction you want, baby. Take it to its conclusion before we decide. Uh, I would say the big thing is that instruments are super high-fidelity things, uh, not really very digital. So those things where you assign a key and it's a button press, those things really frustrate. But I really loved the promise of Wii Music, for example. And you could play different instruments with this thing. Hard to control, but the Wii Mote's really high fidelity. And I love the potential that was there. Uh, nowadays, you don't really have that that much. I'm sure, you do have really nice motion control in the PS5 and the Switch controllers and whatnot. Yeah, I would say that you're answering a completely different question, but uh, let's go with it. And uh, didn't didn't you make some sort of instrument to it with that big band character in Skullgirls? Oh, man. OK, you did one. I mean, that, that one was kind of cool. You know, big band is this character that is made out of a, a big brass instrument. So he is himself a trumpet player. And is he a trumpet. I thought he was like a saxophone. Well, he is a saxophone, but he plays the trumpet during oh. a super movie. And that's a little weird. <laughs> So he has all sorts of instruments going on and you can play all sorts of stuff uh, during his super where he goes tuba, 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 tuba. You actually have this time where you could just freestyle and the six buttons on the controller actually correspond to the three valves on a typical trumpet. So if you are a trumpet player, you kind of know how to play music on your fighting stick. You, you got some really cool stuff that can happen. There's one match where someone actually did a happy birthday and prior to doing the happy birthday he played happy birthday during the super yeah i thought that was like it done in real time which is impressive a lot of the ones i've seen are like in practice mode or whatever but this was in a match yeah wow. to have the presence of mind to do that yeah that's wild i i could not do that i was impressed that not impressed i was unsurprised it's the opposite of impressed for as soon as that character came out and people started figuring or as as that ability happened like immediately someone did the opening theme from evangelion and i was like yeah that's 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 what would happen that one's pretty good um i really like a lot of those anime themes this is the north star that's fun yeah that's pretty good you watch shock um i think the question was actually about using uh unusual or certain like chosen in instruments in video game scores like yeah when to evoke a particular feeling yeah using an oboe or whatever but uh we answered a different question, and that was fine. Fine by me. How about our next question? How about it? Mm -hmm. What are the most interesting risk and reward dynamics in video games? That takes a little pontificating. Mm -hmm. Man, I, I feel like I was thinking about this recently, and I'm just... Well, I guess I'll start with an easy one, which is uh, Samurai Showdown. Up until that point, fighting games had been trying to be pretty balanced. And, you know, no one character was way more powerful than another. No moves could, you know, instantly kill you or anything like that. But with Samurai Showdown, they put in this big risk reward of uh, like a heavy slash or whatever that has a huge wind up. But if you hit it, it takes down most of the opponent's health. But if you miss, of course, then it leaves you exposed for a long time. And I feel like that desire to push games in that direction is what made it popular because if it paid off it felt great i guess that got taken to a, a further extent in games like bushido blade where you know you could instant kill somebody kind of standard fighting game things uh nowadays but at the time they came out they were pretty pretty innovative and different i like the really optional risk reward things in you know exploration games like a metroid or something where um it's like okay there's just a you know some more missiles or whatever at the end of this i don't need those but I want something more to do and it's really hard. Yeah. Even like the, the B sides in Celeste is a really good example of one too, or it's just yeah. like you can go do this if you want to. Um, and your reward is not at all, you know, mandatory to finishing the game or anything. It's just there for fun. Those are my favorite risk rewards. Uh, you know, I finally played Celeste. <laughs> 
What'd you think? We can talk about that later. Okay. I'm thinking about this puzzle game, Hexic, which is I know. probably most notable for being one of the, was it actually packed in uh, as an already installed on the hard drive? Yeah, with the 360. 360. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Um, that was a really interesting game. It's an Alexei Pagetnov joint. Everyone knows him for Tetris, but I really like Hexic. It's a pretty hard game, but beating the game is the end state, but not necessarily the goal. After you get to a certain point, you decide that, oh, the best thing to do is to try to keep on playing the game as long as you can while avoiding that end state. So, yeah. you know, when you play the game, you create all these stones on the board that become permanent fixtures. And then you have to try to avoid that. So there's a lot of interesting stuff happening in the game as the board develops. You're creating all these stones in order to get closer and closer to the end state, but you don't want to make so many so close to each other that you actually hit that. End. For a chill puzzle game, it's incredibly tense. I remember uh, playing that game for like a few minutes and then later going and watching you play it and being like, wow, this is a, this is a different game than I was playing. <laughs> Just like the way you were playing it was a different game than what I, I was just like, all right, I'm going to make these little hexagon shapes like you're supposed to. It's fine. Casual match three. Yeah. But then you were you were doing all kinds of stuff. Oh, my dog has joined and he has decided to scoot his butt on the couch. Hey, pocket. <laughs> yeah, he, he, he came down from a busy, busy afternoon of barking upstairs to scoot his butt on the couch. Good job, buddy. I worked on a hexic for a minute. Oh, you did. Oh, really? Uh, there was a uh, exclusive to the Windows 8 store, Hexic, that, right. that, that Other Ocean was commissioned to do. And it was uh, very Candy Crush-like in, in its uh, microtransactions and such. Yeah, I don't know if you it's brought that. back Clippy. It's a, I, well, yes, canonically, I brought back uh, Clip It is his name, because I, I decided that the, uh, the hexagon that, that gives you the tutorial is canonically Clip It, um, because it is a Microsoft game. And the first line of the game is, it looks like you're playing Hexic. Would you like some help? <laughs> um, so I did bring Clip It back to life canonically in a Microsoft game. Even if they won't admit it, uh, I'll tell you the truth right here on the Answer Credit Show. Was there any risk slash reward to that decision of bringing <laughs> Clip It back? Uh, no, I didn't tell anyone. So there's no risk. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> no risk, only reward. I'm just saying in my head, that's Clip It. And I wrote a line to substantiate it, but I the see. game okay. is never like, by the way, this is Clip It. It's implied. It would have been riskier if you had bid to actually use the character with the little googly eyes on the paperclip. That is true. Um, I did I did get some uh, some of the best feedback of my life. Uh, and I apologize if I've told the story before, but not really because it's great. The storyline at one point was uh, you'd get a really good job at, at, at Microsoft if you were great at Hexic. And among the perks that was that executives got got their own son. They didn't have to use the uh, pedestrian son for warmth. OK. And uh, we got feedback from Microsoft uh, cutting the line. And it just said, cannot imply that Microsoft owns the sun. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good point. Uh, Very good. For, oh, I was going to mention a Mario, believe it or not. Too really? Right now. Mm -hmm. Well, we can't. Oh. Right? Well, maybe you can mention Mario now. Which video game character would give the best deep tissue massage? Mm, probably not Mario. Uh, Bonk could do a good one with his head, just smashing it into you, jumping on your back. Oh, kind of a shiatsu. Mm -hmm, yeah. Mr. Godhand can do all kinds of punches and configurations and clamps and whatever. Yeah, that would be a good one. The dudes from Cho Aniki. Mm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, they're, they're muscly. Yeah, at first I was trying to think of good, like, grips like good fingertips but i think the massage is really just in the downward pressure yeah and so yeah i think it's got to be someone who's got a lot of core body strength downward pressure uh drill dozer <laughs> you might oh. die. i don't want to drill dozer massage i'm good mm. i'll keep thinking about the zangief for sure yes although I, I bet his skin is really like dry and, and cracky you know he could, he could use oils that's true. You could use a lot of oils. Yeah. Oh, but... then, then there's Hakan from Street Fighter. Yeah, he's oily all the time. That's true. I bet Dalsim could reach some areas you wouldn't expect. <laughs> I don't know if that's useful. <laughs> Probably not. Who else we got? Mm. I think Hakan is a good one. Yeah. Well, okay. So, uh, so aspects other than muscly. Knowledge of human anatomy. Yeah, anatomy, right. So uh, maybe the, the doctor from Trauma Center or something. Yeah. Ken from, is his name Ken? From uh, Fifth and North Star? 
he knows all the pressure points that can kill you. He probably also knows the ones he also that knows can ones that can, like save your life and stuff. He knows all about them. So he could just go po 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 a video game character. There have been Fist of the North Star video games. There's been okay. tons of them. Yeah. I mean he's he's not technically a video game character, because originally he's not, but he's been in video games. Well, if that counts, then I'm gonna go Batman. Batman knows everything. Yeah, okay. Sherlock Holmes. And he's got the core body strength. That's true. Batman would be pretty good. There's got to be like some chiropractor. I'm trying to think about fighting game characters that are that that have like some deep medical knowledge. Doctor Faust, Faustus, Faust. You know, with the with the bag on his head from. Uh, oh, Doctor Fauci. Yeah, yeah Doctor Faust. Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure he's uh, a video game character or a masseuse. I mean, eventually they'll be making some like Doctor Fauci dating sim oh, game. Yeah. If they haven't already, one of those dating sims that are like lol, so random. This is a dating. Sim. Yeah, yeah the, I, be- I believe the kids call him based daddy. So. <laughs> because they based him and put him in the oven. Right. Good at making turkeys. Who is that trauma center character? I don't know. Dr. Trauma. Dr. Center. <laughs> Professor Center. <laughs> oh, wait a minute. Yeah, there is that trauma center character. The It's the lady in the kimono who's supposed to be good at that acupressure stuff. Oh, OK. All right. All right. All right. We're getting somewhere with acupuncture. That's close. Yeah. Machomp from uh, Pokemon. Pokemon. Four arms. Yeah. Four arms. Pretty good. Four arms is good. Yep. Goro. But Goro wouldn't want to. He wouldn't. No, I would not trust Goro. No. What about Lady Goro? Doesn't she have like six arms or is she still have four? What's her name? Probably. Lady I don't know. Goro. I don't know. Um, what's her name? Siren from from uh, X-Men, I think, is a video game character. Six arms. There you go. Oh, yes. I, or Spiral. Spiral. Thank you. Spiral. Yeah. Spiral from the Mojo verse. Yes. Spiral has that amazing animation. Good yes, Lord. She does. That animation is like it's it's not as many frames as you'd think, but it, just like watching any one of those arms, it feels like it feels like you should quit your job because <laughs> you'll never be as good at whatever you're doing as that person was at doing that. I really appreciate that animation, knowing that character, because she is her powers essentially are like dancing to make bad things happen. She should always look like she's in weird poses. Some artists get that. Some don't. Uh, Art Adams, of course, the uh, creator artistically gets it good stuff good stuff that character probably a really good massage but also uh might end up in the mojo verse and and a slave so wouldn't want to wouldn't want to risk that it's not a good risk reward uh mechanic uh no no mojo isn't that the the monkey from uh samurai jack or whatever uh powerpuff, yes, powerpuff girls. girls mojo jojo oh, close oh, enough jojo, jojo. both the tar- both tartatovskis yeah it's all the same stuff well this is where i was going to put the question from last week's winner chris graft uh, but uh, because we never got one, yeah, yeah. instead, it's time for us to run an improv zone. Uh, oh, welcome to the show, Vince. <laughs> As we record this, Sony is broadcasting their 2021 PlayStation Showcase. Since we're missing it, we're going to imagine what's happening right now. I'm expecting big sequels, IP adaptations, quirky indie titles, and updates on ongoing projects. Each of you will take turns presenting special announcements to our many viewers eager to see what Sony is up to next. Here we go. Uh, sorry, I was listening to my dog bark. Can you can you do that again? Okay. He's barking right next uh, to you're me pretending then. to present video games at a uh, Sony presentation. You said announcements. Would... You didn't say video games. OK. Oh, yeah. Well, but, you enough. can do both. You can. Yeah, it doesn't have to be a video game. It just has to be Sony related. We heard the outcry from fans that, uh, you know, Spider-Man Miles Morales, not a real sequel. We heard you. We internalized that. Uh, I'm proud to announce that uh, we have created an entire sequel. Uh, we're calling it Spider-Man 2. Um, it is done. It is gold. And uh, we've also canceled it. So <laughs> nice. it's never going to come out. <laughs> um, it was great. Uh, but we're also not going to show you any screenshots. We legally can't, actually. Um, but the game is canceled forever. Um, and also Spider-Man's dead. And uh, second announcement of the day is a big one. Uh, we're no longer going to call ourselves Sony Computer Entertainment. We're 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 going backwards, folks. Uh, we are we are ImageSoft from this day forward. Thanks, Frank. Uh, picking it up from there. You know, we 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 heard that you wanted more hardware. You can't get enough PlayStation Fives. We thank you for buying all the ones that you have. But it seems to us that the handheld market is wide open right now. That's why we are announcing the PlayStation Vita Two now. We call it the, it, you might call it the 2, but it's actually more like the PlayStation Vita 3D. It's a sphere 
and it's all touch screen, just touch screens all over the place. You roll it around, you poke it, uh, you try to, it's got rear touch, it's got front touch, it's got side touch, it's got touch everywhere. That's the PlayStation Vita 2 slash 3D. No, it's the ImageSoft 3D. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> Sorry. A uh, little, little correction from the booth there. It's the ImageSoft 3D. And um, <clears throat> we have uh, announced that uh, we're going to be bringing Spider-Man 2 uh, to, the, to the platform and canceling it there as well. Uh, we know you're looking forward to that. And picking up from there here at the ImageSoft conference, uh, <laughs> as you know, we are now the tenders to Evo. And because of that, that's right. All of our games are now esports. We've heard the cries that you want more and more esports. So now everything is an esport. Uh, the next Uncharted, which you see behind me right here, that is esports. We have an exclusive Tomb Raider game that is esports. Uh, we have all these uh, VR games that are coming out. Those are all esports. So esports for everyone. Uh, we are democratizing esports by making every single video game that we make esports. Bringing new meaning to e for everyone. It's now esports for everyone. We want to thank gamers and fans from around the world for sticking with us through this tumultuous time here at ImageSoft. That's right. And uh, we're going to announce also that we're bringing back a uh, Japan team to make Ape Escape esports. Everybody's running around. It's a battle royale, ape catching extravaganza. Team up with your friends to catch much bigger apes. Uh, get your nets with real money. Um, join this esports team and get sponsored by Muscle Milk. Sincerely, Sony Imagesoft. Don't have to wait. Download it right now. I like that sign off. I think that should be uh, that should be how we do things these things going forward. <laughs> oh my! Please look forward to it sincerely, Nintendo. <laughs> That's right. Together in Christ, <laughs> Sony and <himself. laughs> Your obedient servant, ColecoVision. Uh, we'll be right back after a quick break. Maybe you should have introduced the Sony Ibo or ImageSoft Ibo. The what? The Ibo? What's that? It would be a new dog. Oh. So lifelike. I see where you're going with this, Vince. I like this. The next Rob, you know, have the Ibo or whatever interact with Uncharted. Like if there's enemies in the room, it starts barking. Oh man, I missed the opportunity to call my Vita Sphere the Eyeball. That was the ImageSoft 3 yeah, It was the 3 Rita 3 was the way to go. Okay. New ImageSoft Ibo works exclusively with Rule of Rose 2. I like it. There you go. Oh, and Rule of Rose 2 will launch at $600 to uh, match the <laughs> existing price of the, the first game. Exclusively games. unlimited run game. <laughs> yes. Hey, I was going to say exclusively at Sophie. <laughs> oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> oh, man. That's good. It is a Heritage Auctions exclusive. <laughs> comes, <laughs> comes created. Every copy is a 9.8 A++ right off the factory line. Welcome back to the Insert Credit Show. Time for us to head it. Head first into the dirt bag. Blorp. <laughs> That's the official sound effect of heading into the dirt bag. Head first. Blorp up, everybody. Uh, this is the part of the show where we take a question submitted to patreon.com slash insert credit by one of our generous uh, donators or donors, as they're sometimes called, uh, where for just $3 a month minimum, uh, you can get access to the form that allows you to send us questions. You can get our regular episodes one day early. One day early. One day early. And even nice access to exclusive bonus episodes and other content every month. Great job, Vincent. That actually worked. I can't believe it. I'm in awe. Uh, this week's question comes from Dilson, who asks, what is the most out of touch from actually developing games idea you've ever heard? My own is hearing dozens of Zelda fans daydreaming about a re-release of Ocarina of Time with new art and more story. Smokerine of time. Yeah. Dilson. Is that a name? Dilson, yeah. He's the son of Dill. Ah, yeah, there you go. Pickle Rick. It's been a long time since we've heard this one, but the idea of Apple buying Nintendo just never had any basis in any theoretical reality. Yeah. It, it just made no sense. Like Apple was hardly interested in games. Um, they were not in a position to buy Nintendo, one of the most successful entertainment companies of all time. And 
it just came from a place of like just seeing that i don't know what was i guess the gamecube at the time maybe the wii like they they see that it's technically in third place or something and therefore nintendo doesn't have money even though they had like billions in 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 the treasure chest at that point they were selling each console at a profit unlike everybody they were making money every quarter and they had a lot of money saved up but because they didn't sell as much as as uh sony they were in trouble and needed to be purchased That, that that's the one that comes to mind for me as being the most like you just have no sense of reality at all well talking about game design ideas i'm sure i've told this before but the aunt of the viral video with the nintendo 64 kid who opens the nintendo 64 at mm-hmm. christmas and is like nintendo 64 and is all excited and for some reason that video became very popular she called me up at game developer magazine uh when i was working there and was like what if we make a video game about that call the developers it's pretty popular make a video game about nintendo 64 kid he's my nephew Hmm. it was pretty out there in terms of understanding of how game development works because uh first of all she was calling a magazine to be like get the developers on the horn get them to make this thing and then second of all it was about a meme well it's because of that good seo you know she searched game developer yep and there you were yep where's where's chris graft he should have asked us a question about seo freaking guy tune into the prior episode folks (laughs) yeah kind of an end joke now yes yeah, I don't know. I got I got a bunch back in those days, and I can't remember all of them. It was all stuff like, what if there was GTA but cops? It's like, yeah, I mean, they got that. That's narc. I think I'm always most surprised by the suggestions that come from people who should know better because they have on it. So people that are in game study, university programs for game development, game design, and they'll say things like, oh, yeah, we should just take this thing except make it an MMO. <laughs> huh? What have you been doing for the last year? You, you say you're going into your second year of schooling and you don't recognize just what an undertaking an MMO is. You, you can't just, you know, make MMO Katamari or, or something. There really was this time. It, it seemed like everybody coming into the industry was like, I'm going to make an MMO. There was like five years where everyone was just like, my first game will be an MMO and it will be the greatest. What? How did that, what happened there? <laughs> what happened I think people, people figured out how hard MMOs are. Why did they even think that they could do it? Like Because it was the most popular thing in the world. And it kind of still is. Kind of the question that restarted, insert credit to begin with after a long hiatus, was a story I told on Twitter uh, where I was uh, recalling a time I was talking about a video game to like one of my parents' friends. And they gave me the brilliant suggestion that, you know what game would sell a million copies if you had to fight your (laughs) mother-in-law? And uh, I kind of rounded up the old crew on Twitter and asked them all, how would you make a game about fighting your mother-in-law? And uh, I remember this now. (laughs) It, it, It just reminds me of, I mean, maybe I'm the only one here who has any experience in this, but, uh, looking at older magazines from the eighties, um, Video game magazines sometimes, certainly, but things like Mad and Cracked also would just have like fake video games that they made up as jokes mm-hmm. with like, you know, hand drawn crappy pixel art and, and fight your mother in law is totally something I can see in the back of Mad Magazine. <laughs> <laughs> it's totally. like one of these games. Yeah, get L Jaffe on the It would have a, a, a picture of what's his name? Was what's that guy's Alfred name? E. Newman. Alfred, Alfred E. Newman. Alfred E. Newman. Like literally punching an older woman in the face and her blood spewing everywhere. Like rolling pins in her hair. Yeah. Classic stuff. Andy Cap style. Yeah, sure. Quick announcement. I looked at Twitter. Uh, looks like Spider-Man 2 is uncanceled. Oh, oh. interesting. That's well, a shame. We'll, we'll have to see how the uh, Image Soft 3 to, does handle that. <laughs> Hopefully they can get it together. All right. Here's our next question. Uh, design a video game about the Nintendo 64 kit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well... Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> Let's see. So you're a Nintendo 64 kid. It's basically it's like a WarioWare, but with rudimentary 3D mini games. So you're a Nintendo 64 kid. You open up your N64 and you're all excited about it, but you're too excited to play any one game for more than 30 seconds because you got ADD and such. And so you're just playing through every like little bits of every game. And uh, otherwise, your aunt will kill you or something. I don't know. There's got to be some external pressure. <laughs> oh, God. I had to work the aunt in. Fight, you have to fight your mother-in-law. You have to fight to your mother-in-law. <laughs> Even though you're only um, 12 years old, <laughs> you have a mother-in-law somehow. 
You're married married to uh, married to video games, the mother of video games. So what I have in mind is, unfortunately, I had a 2D in my head, but that makes no sense now. So let's skip that. Um, but it, it's 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 a kind of platformy game. You're a kid in pajamas, and there are presents. You have to like button mash and like fill a meter to actually open them. But there's threats all around you, so you know you have to sort of like avoid shooting, like your aunt shooting at you, and like the Christmas tree like throwing ornaments at you. I don't know. Your dog is dragging the presents away. Yeah, exactly. And you, you, you have to like time survival with getting in there and button mashing, you know, and, and it's like almost there, almost there. Ah, oh, crap. Gotta, gotta get away. Um, and, uh, there, there's a lot of optional risk reward. Okay. Oh. And then maybe once you, uh, once you get in there, um, and open a package, that's when you do your, your WarioWare low poly mini game. Uh, yeah. I like that. Like when he opens an N64, the world becomes 3d. Yeah. Yeah. And it's an MMO. Oh, and of you course. can save screaming Nintendo 64 as an attack to uh, kill your mother-in-law. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> like the whole screen shakes and there's wind effects. And I figure why not lean into the sort of comfy vibes from the perspective of the parents giving the gift. And it's basically a game of being there on Christmas morning. and You're trying to figure out how to arrange the gifts so that when the kid actually discovers it, he's at optimum happiness or optimum contrast between this and previous gifts. And you're just sort of exploring the possibility alongside the rest of the stuff. It's a game about designing the perfect Christmas morning. I, I think that could be cool. I, my, yeah. uh, my comfy vibe sensor. So he gets the, uh, the lovingly hand knitted sweater from his grandma that he will absolutely hate right before the n64 so that he's 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 like at a low period and he's 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 thinking nothing no more good stuff is gonna come and then he gets the n64 and blows his mind but he's got a scream like of course just be the ending the scream has to be part of the gameplay we're gonna get sued by this kid's aunt for uh, coming up with all these cool ideas (laughs) and for you breaking your nda with her about that conversation (laughs) (laughs) that's right this is more of a friend yeah we're buddies oh (laughs) that's good to know uh here's our next question what is the most hellish assignment that you can imagine for a video game composer? Most hellish assignment. Uh, uh, you can do whatever, and uh, we haven't made the level or the battle or the encounter yet, but I'm sure it will be cool, but just write the music for it, and you have uh, no reference. Yeah, there's no window on how, how long it'll take us to request changes. Oh, yeah. Revisions up the wazoo. Oh, and can you make it sound like John Williams? And, oh, can you make it sound like Daft Punk as well? <laughs> Daft Williams. I feel like uh, I feel like I lost what I was going to say. How about that? Well, I'll just I'll just intervene and say that uh, I don't think uh, Daft Punk is Daft nor Punk. True. Hmm. But but if you were to call it Punk, that would be Daft. So I think I right. think there's mm. well, there's real layers to Daft Punk. I didn't realize. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're pretty Daft for punks. Oh, yeah, this is what I was going to ask. It's always struck me that arranged albums or like arranged scores are really they're almost always worse than the original or they're just boring or it's like they made this because they had to. Is that a, a, a terrible assignment to like remix or redo all of this stuff or have a different take on it? Because it's so rarely good. I'm super surprised whenever it is. That's true. Like my first thought was the worst is if you're given no reference, but maybe the worst is when you're actually given something that has a temp track on it yeah. and you're asked to just redo that. Vince, I read on your website that one of your first jobs was turning Konami themes into cell phone ringtone. That is true. Some of those were pretty okay. I, I mean, Konami music can be, well, it often is really good. You know, they did a lot of really great stuff in the 80s and 90s. But um, I, honestly, I didn't really mind it. It was a really fun challenge in terms of the technical design of all those tracks. You know, it wasn't interesting musically, very interesting from a programming and technical perspective. Did you do the opening, like, Super Nintendo era? Yeah. I did do that. Okay, because that's a good ringtone. I just, that, I would do that right now. It's true. It totally is. Uh, I wonder if a hellish assignment would be make a Streets of Rage 3 authentic style soundtrack today. So you would have to use like the ancient weird algorithms that Yuzo Koshiro created in order to maybe maybe it would actually be too fun. Maybe I think, it, I think it'd be kind of really fun. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Streets of Rage 3 is pretty awesome, honestly, in terms of just how fun and crazy 
it can sound. Yeah. I think those algorithms are really cool. <laughs> I, I think approaching it from a technical pers technical perspective would be great. And I think the sound is great. I was I was actually asking Motohiro Kawashima if he could like use a, the original tools to make the music for Oh Dear, which he worked on. And he was like, I don't I don't remember how any of that stuff works. I can't remember how to program. I can't do it. <laughs> Yeah. So it was it would have been hellish for him. Oh, I can definitely understand that. I imagine it would be more fun from my perspective because it would be almost like an archaeologist uh, yeah. treading some new ground for me. What else would be hellish? How about orchestras? Yeah. <laughs> Is that hellish or not? Uh, nah, I mean, that's not really hellish. It's hellish if someone asks me to do something that's totally not appropriate. I mean, I think that's really it. It's it's the whole idea of a mismatch. You know, John Williams, but Daft Punk, uh, you know, orchestra, but you know, Streets of Rage 3. Yeah. But but that's the thing. A lot of, you know, there are a lot of game designers that don't really totally know what they want, but they still feel like they need to put on their director cap and speak authoritatively when it comes to the request. Like, I don't know how music works, but here's some music I like. I feel like that works sometimes, though. If it's It's worse when they're like, I want exactly this, but they have no idea w what aspect of this that they like. Like if they just say, right. here's some music I like, make something like it, that's OK. But if they're like the request then becomes, no, I specifically wanted you to make this thing that I don't know how to articulate. I worry about that with myself. I hope I don't do that to everybody too much. Sorry, Kurt Feldman. <laughs> <laughs> I was thinking about Kurt. Uh, which video game set pieces would make the best Lego sets? What about that dangly train from Uncharted 1? Oh, that's a good one. Put it on a little hinge. Mm hmm. And you, you have a little Nathan Drake hanging on to some little ladder pegs. And oh, that's pretty good. I do like that. Um, have they done Green Hill Zone? Probably not because they're doing Mario, but uh, that stuff looks like Legos to me. Yeah. I don't know if that's a set piece, though. It's a level. Um, so what set piece specifically? Like the loops don't really work so well. In like, you know, this is a bad idea. Just, just forget I said anything. I'm sorry, everyone. No, there's a Lego Green Hill Zone. It came out in February of this year. Wow. Is it any good? Whoa um take a look all right let's look, let's look. it's in a book <clears throat> like green, green, green hill zone and I posted green hill zone. uh okay Whoa. so it uh wait is that a real thing oh i see that's lego ideas did one come out i don't know i'm not uh, familiar enough with lego to know the difference <laughs> it, i thought it was on the official lego website and i was like well okay that's a thing okay i see it uh it looks sonic good. mania green hill zone it's uh yeah, got got some of the bosses from Sonic Mania. Okay, yeah, that that's pretty good. All right, I feel good about my life decisions. Suddenly, yeah. <laughs> See, you are worth something, Frank. <laughs> Thank you. You matter. Look at those Lego flickies. Those are cool. Uh, I don't like them. They look weird. I don't like to me. the Lego flickies. No, their like heads the are too flickies. big and their bodies are too small. They're Lego. <laughs> yeah, that's that's not my. Fault. Like, look at Sonic. He's Lego. He's just little, he looks he looks even worse. Stubby guy. Yeah, exactly. He's Lego. Yeah, god darn Lego. Well, I mean, I also don't like find lego people attractive they're lego people man they're not supposed to oh i think real. they're super hot <laughs> <laughs> if somebody else were on this show they'd probably talk about one of those specific zones in one of the souls type games oh yeah uh but i don't know any of this uh my dog is having a conniption so i might go check that out <laughs> i'll be right back <laughs> okay vincent what you got i keep on going back to katamari actually so. mm. I want to see a big ball of stuff run over some of those Lego. Pieces. It seems really appropriate. I like that. I don't think they would stick, but right. I think you could make a Katamari um, that has strategically placed, you know, pegs studs or studs. Thank you. Um, that you could stick just about anything to. So you could, you know, you have to hand assemble the Katamari. It doesn't work automatically, but otherwise, yeah. I'm thinking the Castlevania castle would be pretty good. Oh, the, the stairs on the way to Dracula. Yeah. That's in um, like every game or or uh, just the part of level one that has meat in the wall. Yes. Uh, you know, all these big Lego sets have Easter eggs in them now, and yeah. that would be kind yeah. of the perfect thing to do for that. I think the That's mountain amazing. from Journey would be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. That's our feedback. How's your dog? Uh, he does not like what's happening outside is how it's going. I don't know what's happening outside. I opened the door and there was nothing there, uh, but I did smell this overwhelming waft of feces as i opened the door so that might be it maybe someone took a dump on the porch or something like that i don't know oh god um, yeah i would probably bark yeah i hope they didn't but i guess he's probably never gonna stop so um this is just what his life is now 
What about Shenmueville? That'd be a good Lego set. Oh yeah, Shenmueville. Yeah, where Shenmue <laughs> takes place, where Shenmue <laughs> lives. I'd hang out in Shenmue Town. Which part? I mean, the so in the first game, the the part with all the shops. Yeah, yeah. And then... a, you have to like pick a shop, I think, for it to be a a, a real. Well, it could be like three shops together, right? So it could be like one of those city sets that has three shops. I think you got the one with the the like secret upstairs tattoo parlor. Yeah, I think you've got. Oh, there's like a place with Chinese mirrors or something that's crucial to the plot, right? And then maybe the bar where you can play pool. Or no, 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 uh, no. Sorry, you need the arcade, right? Or and or the convenience store. This is getting complicated. I'm sorry, everyone. I just shouldn't participate. No, complicated at all. Lego sets are like really popular right now. They just announced this like question block that you could unfold, and there yeah, are a bunch of it. Mario 64 levels in there. What's the store? It's like the tomato store or something in Shenmue. As the song um, plays when you're in you, there, you can just add all the stories you want and just build up the whole town and then build up Kowloon Walled City and build up. We're Yoda. gonna lose a lot of money on this project, <laughs> Frank. Please be nicer to Frank, he's my friend. <laughs> we got it. I'll, uh, I'll just mute for the rest of the show, everyone. I'm, I'm really sorry. Shenmue is great. Oh, no! think about something a little older, like the the opening to Die Hard Arcade, like that would sure. be pretty cool. Yeah, I we like could that. lose money on that Top one. Top the I'd building and then you go inside. And I, I, like Die Hard Arcade is pretty great just because of how all the different stages are interconnected. So you could actually sell it all as like a, a complete kit. And you can make some little, uh, some little gimmicks where like you can flip a thing so that it's like what you, when you kick when you run down the hallway. I'm going to sneak this in real quick. Uh, okay. House of the Dead and uh, it's actually typing of the dead and there's little dream casts that go on their backs. Oh, that's cute. So we mentioned uh, John Williams earlier. And uh, I've seen Koji Kondo and Nobuo Imatsu and Jeremy Sewell all referred to as the John Williams of video game in different listicles and the like. Is any of them really the John Williams of video games? And if not, who are their true or equivalent? I was telling you Tallarico. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, John Williams is a pretty good composer who wears his musical upbringing on his sleeve. So he is a pretty good jazz pianist. When he was growing up, when he was making it early on, in, he was a session pianist. It's not that he was like a particularly good orchestral composer, but he understood jazz idioms really well. And he took that and then put it into the orchestral idioms that were being used in movies and created a lot of what is considered the score. So who created the modern epic video games? I mean, I feel like they were just sort of influenced by John Williams. Yeah, I think John Williams is the John Williams of video games. Yeah, John Williams is is uh, not my favorite composer. In fact, the reason I came up with Tommy Tallarico is because John Williams is kind of my derisive reference for when people don't have specific taste. Then they'll, they'll be like, let's get a John Williams style score. And it's like, that just sounds like movies. But no one's ever like, OK, like define the Tommy Tallarico sound, you know, like I can't do that. Yeah, I kind of could. It's like dumb guitars and a bit of sweeping orchestral stuff. Like I wouldn't recognize it. But if I heard something that sounded fine. And like someone was pointing it out to me and I was like, why are you, why are you making me listen to this specifically? Like, this just sounds like everything else. But then I would assume it was Tommy Tellery. I'll tell you the Tommy Tellerico sound. Uh, Esper, put a cash register. Wow. Ka-ching. Yeah, there you go. I don't know if that's true. Um, <laughs> I think that's, I think the opposite might be true. And that would explain <laughs> a lot that's going on right now. Uematsu is probably the closest, right? Um, I guess. Because Uematsu it's not coming from the John Williams perspective of having a specific musical bent because Uematsu didn't, but all of Uematsu's stuff has translated so well to higher fidelity over the years. Like everything that he's done has, has translated perfectly to like metal guitars and symphonies equally well. So I feel like when it comes to like modern video game music, I feel like there's an argument to be made for Uematsu. Yeah. Uh, probably not just from that perspective, but simply the fact that he's, Final Fantasy. He's the sound of yeah. the, the vast majority of Final Fantasy, just like John Williams was the s sound of Star Wars. And Star Wars probably would have succeeded pretty well, even without, but maybe there's a connection. There. They could have yeah. replaced all the music with the baby elephant dance. <laughs> yeah, who's the Henry Mancini of video game? <laughs> uh, Tommy Tallarico. There you go. That might be Koji Khan. It, yeah, that, that could be. Yeah, there's a lot of good ones out there. 
I'm I'm less interested in who's the John Williams and more in who's like you know who's a who's a good weirdo composer. I can't think of any um for mo- movies, but you know uh what's her name the Bomberman lady Junko somebody. Oh yeah, uh she's cool. She does lots of weird stuff. Yeah, uh, Jun Chikuma. Yeah, she's really interesting. Oh, you want to know who the Wendy Carlos? Yes, I do. Yeah, Jun Chikuma. In addition to doing all of that wild Bomberman stuff and really doing a lot of experimental with uh, this thing that I keep trying to get Vince to to define for me, which is music that is very like warmly in the middle distance from you. It's like it feels closer than video games were in the past, but it's not in your face. And now she's like some Afghan instrument master. I can't remember which instrument it is, but I love this. She she curates Arabmusic.com. Yeah, that's cool. She rules. June Chikuma, you can you can check out her uh, Les Archives, Les, Ar- Les Archives on uh, the Freedom to Spend label. That's some of her early electronics experimentation work from before the Bomberman days. It's pretty wild stuff. And you can 100% see where Bomberman came from listening to this early stuff that she did. Pretty cool. But she's not John Williams. So are we sold on Uimatsu being the best uh, comparison then? Yeah, for better or for worse. For yeah, lack I- of a better. I don't know. Sure. Okay. Uh, it's time to go on to our lightning round. Uh, this could be a disaster, but uh, I'm ready. I am trying something new. Uh, here's Uh-oh. what we're going to do. We are going to take turns singing no more than 10 notes from a video game song of our choice. Okay. And the rest of the panel has to tell you uh, whether or not they recognize it. I don't want to sing. You gotta. Yeah. If nobody can recognize it, you get no points. If all three of us can recognize it, you also get no points. You score by getting one or two of us to recognize it. And we'll do three rounds that way. Man, this is... What the hell? So so is that three each? Yeah, yeah, three each. I don't want to do this. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) This, uh, man, I mean, like, this is something that kind of requires some preparation and thinking about. Yeah, it sure does. Uh, Would it help if I started? I don't know. Sure. You should do it. Go. go I, I can't um, get um, any video game music in my head right. Now. Right. It's like I'm. <laughs> like, I'm. I'm thinking about words right now, not tunes. I had a tune in my head for the last week, by the way, that I was like, I wonder how I could get someone to identify this tune because I can't remember if it's X, Y, or Z game. But it's gone now. Like it's been in my head literally all week. Let's see if you can recognize this one. Do 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 do. Uh. Yes, I can. It's. Ducktales Moon. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. All right. All three of you got it, which means I get zero points. Uh, <laughs> okay. Man. Well. Okay. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna see if this works out. Here we go. Bum 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 bum. Do do. Oh yeah yeah. Um. You recognize it? Yeah. What about? Oh wait. So do, 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 do. I do not. But we had. You have to not say it. So Brandon. Yeah. I do not recognize. I. I also don't recognize it. Excellent. I got one. I got a point there. Well, Brandon, what was it? Um, it's uh, it's Sucker Tyson. Yep. Okay. Uh, yeah, Vince guy has one point. Okay. So, Alex, you're you're counted in the tallies here. Uh, yeah, Is for it? for this purpose. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Okay, I'll do one. Do oh, wait. <clears throat> I realized. So the thing that I was thinking of wound up getting close enough to Sucker Tyson that I almost <laughs> started saying Sucker Tyson again. Um, do 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 do. Doop 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 doop. Vince, did I do it well yeah. enough for you to understand uh, what that I mean, is? I definitely know that. Yeah. Okay. Frank, do you know that? Absolutely not. No. Brandon understands this guy here. I don't either. What was I it? I think Vince and I are just going to do one for each other. <laughs> right. <laughs> that's how we win. That's the. That is this the. Is how you win. Oscar one twenty percent. That's correct. Okay. All Frank, right. you're up. Uh, I don't know. Um. Do 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 do. I think I don't know what that is. It sounds like a like when you die in something or something. Like that. Nope. I don't know. Uh, Jaffy? Jaffy? Nope. No idea. Uh, that's level one of uh, Batman on the Nintendo. Oh, oh. zero points. Great. Yep. <laughs> Back it's to good me. Good strategy. I figured one person would know that, not all of you. And yeah. Yeah. I figured, I figured Brandon wouldn't. Was, was yeah, my guess. You were correct. Yeah. That that's the way to play. But I'm not very familiar with those soundtracks. That's not what I play those games for. Here's mine. <laughs> do do do. Do, 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 do. Oh, yeah, I know that one. I don't. Ah, I don't. Uh, Frank? That's from Nier. 
Yeah, it's the factory theme from Nier. Is it? Uh, yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. So this means it's my turn again. Yeah, your turn again. Okay, I'm gonna I'm gonna try. I'm gonna keep on going with the strategy, but yeah, I think it might be too easy if I just target. I'm gonna try. Something. All right. Here we go. Bump 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 bump. Dump bump 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 bump. Dump bump 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 bump. Ba da ba dump. Ba da ba dump. Is that ten? Oh, the number of notes. That, that yeah, definitely yeah. went a while. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that went over 10. I've okay. been pointing, I've been counting 10, and yeah, I'm not going off in an awkward space to yeah. accommodate so I guess that. It was like 10, it would be dum bum 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 bum, and then I can't go be. Well, I still don't know what it is. I know it's not Metal Gear Solid, so I'm out. <laughs> no, I don't know. No? Ah, oh, darn it. What was it? Ninja Gaiden. Oh. oh. Okay. Darn. Okay, uh, me? Who's, who's next? Uh, it, Brandon's next. Okay. Okay. Do 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 do. I think I know that. Fancy nut. It's it sounds super familiar, but I'm like, why why is it not coming to mind? Uh -oh. I don't have it at all. I try see I, what I did was I tried to do one that not everyone from a thing that everyone would recognize, but I did a, a less popular song. Yeah. Well, looks like that backfired. What was it? Uh, that's the uh, factory stage of Sonic R. Oh. oh. Work uh, it no. out. Work it out. Make it happen. Oh, I can't recognize that without the lyrics. And I've never played Sonic R, so I wouldn't recognize any of it. Frank, what's your song? Do 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 do. Guys, this is a bad game. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's bad. I feel I feel like I think the ten note thing is 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 a, is a bit of a problem here. I think yeah. it's a good rule. Okay. <laughs> yeah, the rules aren't the problem. The problem is uh, we have the wrong group of players here. Ooh, there's no right group. Right. No. Exactly. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, I don't know. <laughs> it's it's a game for robots. I don't robot. know. <laughs> uh, that is uh, sewer surfing from uh, Turtles in Time. I knew, oh. I knew. Oh. What? What? Really? Yep. Do 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 do. Ah. We need da, more. Da, 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 wrong da, da, part of the song. You should have done da 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 da. Yeah, I would have gotten it with that. Do, do, I would have gotten it do, with do, uh, if Frank had been able to do all of those notes. Then I would have gotten it. Yeah. For sure. Okay. I think I'm up next. Um, I'm going to go with the softball on the uh, chance that one of you won't get it. Uh, da, 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 da. Uh, yeah. Oh, I don't get it. Yeah, I, I was hoping that. Brandon wouldn't get it. Frank, you don't either? Uh, I got it. Yeah, of course Frank got it. Yeah. Frank, I mean, tell, us what, tell us what it is. Uh, yeah, I hope it's Metal Gear Solid. What's Mega Man? What? It's the oh. opening. <laughs> It's the it's opening a... for Mega Man 3. Uh, yeah. Looks like you lose your points. Wow. Uh, I, I recognized it, but what, what did you think it was, Frank? Oh, but he, he's Vince. Metal Gear. I thought okay, it was Metal Gear Solid. Oh, right. you said Metal Gear Yeah. 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 I don't know. And then it goes... Uh, yeah. How does that work if someone knew it but got it wrong? Well, it doesn't matter because Vince had it. Yeah, Vince so, had it. I'm this good. Is, this, I feel like we're missing a rule in here. Look, it's in beta. He, <laughs> ar he arbitrarily <clears throat> called me. You know, so it doesn't matter. I am assigning myself the point. I I am in good okay. faith assuming that Vincent knew the song. Oh, man. Yeah, Vincent. Yeah, assigning yourself the point. Yeah. Look, if I win, I have to come up with a question. So don't fight it too hard. <laughs> yeah, that's fair enough. <laughs> okay. Um. All right. This is our last round. Right. Do, uh, yeah, okay. I'll just do this. Bum, bum. Ba -da 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 Ooh. Oh, yeah, I know that one. I also know it, but I can't place it. I can't place it. Uh, it's Star Fox. Yep, it's Star Fox. Uh, Super Nintendo Star Fox. Uh, mm -hmm. Okay, yep, yep. That's why I couldn't place it. God darn Star Fox. Oh, I wish I could remember that song that I actually want to remember what it is, because uh, that would be helpful in this case. Mm. Man, I've got that Sonic R song in, in my head, except it's the other part of it. Yeah. Look, we don't walk <laughs> away from an insert credit episode with one song from Sonic R stuck in your head. It's not really enough. Okay, let me see if I can do this. <laughs> I haven't tried to use my voice for uh, making melodies, and this is going to be the worst aspect of this. Dun, 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 da, 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 da. Don't know that. Vince is going to be embarrassed if he doesn't know it. Uh, it sounds so familiar. Yeah. Darn it. Well, nothing, nothing here. This is a goddamn title screen from Panzer Dragoon. Oh, ah. God, it is. Yeah. Darn it. Game sucks. Frank, you got one more. Yeah, we're never doing this game again. Sucks. Okay, good. <laughs> I promise you we'll never do this game again. We should have just done one round and tie, tie, yeah. a tiebreaker or something. That should have been it. Uh, well. Okay. Uh, do, 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 Oh, yeah. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, I know that. I don't. Ah, oh, you don't? Oh, I do know it. Oh. It's Dr. Mario. Yeah. Yep. 
Uh, okay, no right. points for Frank. Frank, you have the least amount of points, uh, which means uh, you're our loser. So congratulations. Uh, Vincent, you tied with me. So I'm going to award you the victory, which means you have to come up with a question for next week's episode. Congratulations. That makes sense. Yay. This is the part of the show where we recommend stuff and uh, plug stuff that we happen to be working on if we are so inclined to do that. Yeah, uh, I'll, I'll talk about something. I actually had a, a music thing I was going to recommend, but then I forgot to write it down. So I'm not going to recommend that. I have something that's not a recommendation. I don't think anyone should actually really look at this unless they're interested in a very specific type of, uh, I guess, cultural exploration. So I've been watching this series called Documental, which is a famous Japanese comedian Matsumoto's show about he gets a bunch of comedians in a room for six hours and they have to try to make each other laugh. And if they laugh, then they lose and um, they lose a whole bunch of money that they had to bring themselves. And it's obviously it's it's Japanese reality live TV with comedy. So it is sexist, racist, homophobic, transphobic, just any kind of phobia or ism. It's in there. Uh, so this is why I don't recommend that you watch it. But it is very interesting to see what these folks consider funny and what they consider comedy at all. You know, not not to slight Japan and its humor in general, because there's a lot of funny Japanese stuff out there in movies and manga and anime and whatever. But when it comes to stand up comedy and these are all stand up comedians, it's as though it's as though you took American comedy from the 30s and 40s and then froze it in a crystal and then just increased the intensity and then unleashed it in 2020. Wow. Is when it was done. So the things that they think are funny are like hitting each other, yelling, uh, pretending to be mad, nudity, um, catchphrases, just screaming the same catchphrase over and over, uh, a man dressing like a woman. These are the funniest things that they have. It's it's just it's so old and so weirdly backward. But it is actually sometimes kind of funny to watch these people try not to laugh. Uh, but it's also a show where invariably the funniest people go home quickly because they do funny jokes and it makes everyone laugh, which makes them laugh. And then they wind mm -hmm. up psyching themselves out and going home. And so it's a show. So that you would do very well on this show because you don't find any of it funny. That's right. And as the show progresses, it just gets less funny because the the, <laughs> the worst people are left. And so it's a again, don't watch it. If you're going to yeah. watch it, season two is probably the safest. Season three is absolutely do not watch. Still better than that game I made you do a couple of minutes. Ago. <laughs> probably. So that's that's my anti recommendation is um, don't watch. Just that. think about how comedy from the 30s and 40s in America could could still exist in the world. And it exists in Japanese stand up comedy. Um, I'm going to recommend uh, one of my favorite uh, video game historians. Her name is Kate Willert. Uh, she is at a critical hit dot com. That is a critical hit dot com. Uh, she has just started a video series. I'm very excited about uh, called Video Dames. Uh, and it is the complete history of of playable women in games. Uh, episode cool. zero just came out, and it is uh, an incredibly thoroughly researched look at the first two uh, playable, at least graphically playable, uh, women in games. And uh, uh, it starts at the bottom. I'll tell you what when it comes to playing as women in games. But uh, Kate is Kate's a real one. She does the research. She looks at she looks for weird uh, connections. Uh, Ed Wood makes a guest appearance and it's completely relevant in this Ooh. research. Go check out a critical hit.com is what, who are the first two women? Is it not Ms. Pac-Man? Uh, that's well, I don't know if she's counting non-humanoid women, but okay. no, these, these definitely predate her. The first one that we know of, uh, is a naked woman, um, in an arcade game, uh, released in Japan called streaking, uh, um, which sounds progressive. It sounds like, uh, from the 30s, 40s came out, well after the streaking fad in america and it confused people why but she was able to dig up as part of her research uh an incident in japan uh that surely uh prompted this game so her research is very sound go check it out wow. the second cool. one would be uh uh the women in the mystique uh porn games on the atari uh, hmm. uh vince what you got for us uh actually i wanted to mention that so i'll just go ahead and second it really Kate Willard's great. Uh, yeah. She's been doing stuff for a while now, and I'm really yeah. disappointed that some of her other video content is just really neglected. Yeah. 
like she did that one on Nintendo's Wild Gunman, like the original film-based Wild Gun. And that's been out for half a year and it has 8,000 views on YouTube, which is really sad compared to the hundreds of thousands of views I see, you know, random game stuff. You know, it's fine what those guys are doing, but considering the amount of research that she does, making sure that she's giving the right material. Yeah, she just fantastic on it. So yeah, second that, Kate Willard's great. Did you see the one where she figured out what actually the first video game Easter egg was? And it's, yeah, it's in like the ancient mainframe like lunar lander game that isn't even emulatable but she it's, <laughs> it's so good it's such yeah. good content that one's also five months old less than three thousand views on yeah. youtube and honestly it's one of the best pieces of video game history content ever seen 100 percent. No yeah. book period so and yeah. she's a woman doing video game history what the heck yeah, yeah she's come great. on yeah let's get it together yeah speaking of which i want to congratulate uh kelsey lewin for uh uh, becoming a full-time employee at the Video Game History Foundation. That's yeah, it's really her exciting. first week. Yeah. yeah. Way to go, Kelsey. We're rooting for you. She's going to um, be coming back pretty soon, BTW. I hope so. Onto the old show. Yeah. We can't wait. too often, man. She's got work to do. <laughs> right. Yeah, well, I already asked her, so. <laughs> I know. Um, <laughs> Sorry, Frank. I'm going to continue my streak of recommending comics. Uh, this week, um, if you're interested in comics at all, you've probably read or at least heard of uh, Understanding Comics by Scott McCloud. Uh, that's not what I'm recommending. You're going to recommend the sequel about digital comics. No. <laughs> From the early 2000s, it didn't come to pass at all. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm recommending The Sculptor, which is a uh, an original yeah. graphic novel by the same uh, writer-artist who uh, basically takes all of those principles from understanding comics and uses them uh, to craft into a really unique story. Uh, it's about a guy who makes a deal with death that he's able to instantly sculpt anything he could think of, basically skipping over the creative process, but he only has 200 days to live. And uh, it's about what he does with that and how art is hard, even when it's instantaneous. And it goes in a lot of really interesting directions, as I say, with most of these. And uh, check it out. It's good. Frank, you would like it. Yeah, it's pretty good. I'm going to warn there's sort of a, a, a manic pixie dream girl to it as a well. little bit yeah well, okay I like it the end. <laughs> quite quite a bit i would say all right i didn't didn't bother me so much i would also recommend that if you're listening to this show on any platform where you can subscribe to or review podcasts that you engage with us in that way to keep the algorithms pushing us upwards and forwards you could also go to patreon.com slash insert credit where you yes you could become a patron to submit your own topics get our regular episodes one day early one day early one day early and even access monthly bonus episodes and other exclusive content. You can also join us on forums.insertcredit.com and follow us on Twitter for our own personal updates and projects. Uh, the show is at Insert Credit. I'm at Alex Jaffe. Brandon is at Necrosofty. Frank is at Frank Zafaldi. And uh, Vince, what's your Twitter? At Vincent Diamante. At Vince Diamante. Easy peasy. Wait, is it Vince Diamante or Vincent Diamante? I forget. It's Vincent Diamante. Yeah, Vincent okay. Diamante. Okay, Vincent Diamante. This show is edited by Esper Quinn <laughs> with music by Kurt Feldman. Once more, I'm Alex Jaffe. I'm Frank Cifaldi. I'm Brandon Sheffield. And I'm Vincent Diamante. And you have now completed the episode. Congratulations. I like the uh, nuanced discussion on on the on the forums about the heritage auctions stuff. Oh, you read the forum? I'm looking at it now. I nice. just realized that would be a good a place where people actually would discuss this. Yeah, because yeah. they don't actually like I don't know they don't have a lot of stakes in the game. I would think you know. Uh, yeah, the forums are pretty good, Frank. Someone finding out that he's he's good buddies with Notch also. Right. Oh, really? I think you would find some things to enjoy in there from time to time. Yeah. Yeah, it'd be nice if you stopped by once in a while. You don't have to, but just take a look at it. That is somebody using some uh, compressed air? Is that what's happening? Yeah, that's what I'm doing. Sorry. <laughs> I'm cleaning my teeth. <laughs>